One of my favourite games when I was a kid was a gem on the Super Nintendo called Desert Strike Return to the Gulf, and I distinctly remember renting this game over and over again from my local rental store. It was one of the most fun games I played when I had so few games that I had to stick with whichever ones I was gifted or could eventually save up enough money to buy from birthday gifts and such. I didn't have anywhere near the collection of physical games that I do now, Steam didn't exist, Origin didn't exist, the Epic Games Store thankfully didn't exist, and I built up a lot of familiarity with the few games that I was able to play at the time. Now we have things like emulation, and thanks to a wave of nostalgia that hit me, I got to wondering if there were any Super Nintendo games that I could come up with a challenge run for, but nothing sprung to mind until I struck gold with the cheats for this game. Most of the cheats for Desert Strike do exactly what you'd expect them to by making the game easy with unlimited ammo, health, fuel and such, but one cheat stuck out to me. Doubled fuel consumption. In Desert Strike your fuel acts as a time limit of sorts you have to manage by picking up fuel drums scattered around the map or hidden inside buildings and under normal conditions it'll go from 100 to 0 in 3 minutes and 35 seconds, but enabling this cheat brings that down to 1 minute and 49 seconds. Yes I timed it. So with my lifespan in every mission cut in half, I'm here to ask the question, can you beat Desert Strike Return to the Gulf with doubled fuel consumption? Mission 1, titled Air Superiority, is as simple as it gets and functions as a way to ease you into the game but without feeling like it's a tutorial, and here's a pro tip for you. Your fuel gauge pauses when you fly over the water, which is very useful knowledge if you're going for a faraway objective or item pickup, and can't spare the fuel to go there directly. With that in mind for later, I beeline to the first radar site and annihilate the baddie in green while making sure I pick up the good guy wearing brown on the way. While you do receive points for rescuing passengers in this game, it's actually most useful because each person rescued replenishes 150 points of your chopper's armor, and should you lose a life for any reason, your passengers won't even die and can still be dropped off to take advantage of this if you take damage later in the mission. The destruction of the second radar completes Objective 1 and has the side benefit of reducing the maximum range of all enemies in the mission, to the point that it can become an art to stay just out of range and pelt your target with the basic gun to save ammo for your heavier weapons, but I never learned to do that growing up and I don't have time to learn it now. Staying well clear of the danger zone, I level this building in the top middle for its fuel drums and shoot a few more green people, before heading over to the power station and annihilating it. The power station leaves behind an armor crate and the cluster of bunkers nearby house an ammo crate and a guy with a rocket launcher, the former of which I'll save for later. I'm only down by 120 armor but I figure now is a good time to make room for more passengers since I'll be covering new ground shortly so I take care of that and with my fuel at 24, I take the scenic route southwest to some fuel drums which will give me more than enough juice to make it to my third objective. On my way to the coastline to drop off some passengers, I indulge in blowing some more things up on the way before using the ocean fuel thing to my advantage, and heading back up to the second airfield. I probably should have played it safe and grabbed the fuel drums next to the landing zone, but I was fairly confident that I'd make it to the second airfield, where there's fuel inside the destroyed remains of the eastern building, and I make it with seconds to spare. Clearing out the airfield, I accidentally shoot a guy I'm supposed to rescue a few times, but he walks it off and I pick him up. No hard feelings or anything, and the enemy isn't too thrilled about it, but I settle the issue with my disagreement missiles and we continue forward. I'm too late to stop a shootout between two foot soldiers so I put a missile into one of their jeeps out of spite, and blow up some other things on the way for an ammo crate. With low fuel warnings blaring again, I grab another fuel drum on the northern part of the coast, drop off my passengers again, and head up to the command bunkers. Being the clumsy dingbat that I am, I blew up an armor pickup instead of the dick hole in the tower, and after destroying the first command bunker, I'm worn down just enough that one piss ant in a tower is enough to finish me off right as I grab fuel. At this point, I don't know if losing a life for any reason refills your fuel, or if you have to lose a life from running out of fuel specifically to get the complete refill. As it turns out, it's the latter. So I leave the armor refill from the power station that I forgot about behind, and make my way to the bunker to rescue the secret agent. I'm unsure if I have to destroy everything nearby or just the building that's hiding the bunker entrance, but I like to be thorough. So I clear the nearby area of hostiles, and hovering directly above the hatch seems to do the trick. The locals try to crash my rescue mission, but I've got enough Hellfire missiles to take care of it. Then during a quick break in the action, I nab the nearby fuel so I've got a bigger window to work with, and do a quick sweep of the area for more MIAs. I get to them and save them from the folks shooting at them, but I've run out of room so after grabbing a safety fuel, I drop off who I have and decide that since there are no fuel drums near where they're stranded, killing the guys who are pinning them down the hill will have to do and I finish mission 1. Mission 2, Scudbuster, expands the map and scatters more civilian buildings around so I have to watch my fire a bit more here. We start off with three radar sites with a similar layout so I immediately get to work knocking them down. After the first of three jailbreaks from my second objective, I find myself low on fuel and the closest one is at the power station which is risky because it's a danger zone, but it's either risk that or definitely lose a life. Taking an incredibly risky path around the power station, I grab the fuel and make my escape while a transmission tower sacrifices itself to protect me. 
I make sure to pick up Carlos Valdez in the northeast corner of the map, who was the best co-pilot in the entire game hands down, and well worth saving for that alone. There are 12 prisoners in total that I have to rescue with four at each of the three jails, and I was juggling if I wanted to do jailbreak then landing zone three times, which would be the slower but safer option, or grab six of them before hitting a landing zone only twice, which risks wasting time with the unrescued SKP still running around, which would hopefully still be faster, and I ultimately decided on the former, because I'd like to not lose lives in case I have to run out of fuel at a strategic location to refill it as a last resort. Grabbing the fuel from the eastern landing zone, I now start to plan my path to the next few objectives since they all line up fairly well. Fuel's running low again, and the nearest marked one is southeast sitting on a truck, which makes it noticeably faster to pick up given that the winch doesn't need to lower as much. Speaking of the winch, the quick winch pickup is inside a building northwest of the middle jail, so I go grab that too and head over to the power station. There's only infantry guarding it this time, so I don't see a reason to use my valuable hellfire, so I spray the area with hydras, killing everyone around it, and destroying the power plant to finish objective 3. I'm down to 40 fuel by the time I finish with that, so on my way to the southeast corner of the map for the chemical weapons plant, I destroy a conspicuously lone building to uncover some very fortunately placed fuel drums, and almost get deleted by the nearby danger zone. The chemical plant itself will take a lot of ammo to fully destroy, and the nearby ammo crate under a AAA gun's ass takes care of that. But what I didn't anticipate is how I wouldn't have enough fuel left to make my return trip, so right before I'm about to run out of gas, I grab the ammo and unload on the chemical plant, which is enough to complete my fourth objective. My second last objective is to flush out and capture six Scud commanders scattered throughout the map. Each one I capture will reveal the location of a Scud launcher on the map, and I have to get to it and destroy it before it fires its missile. You have to destroy five of them to complete the objective, but you won't fail if only one or two of them manage to launch their missiles before you can destroy them. With five people already in tow, I have to drop off the first commander before I can continue, and there's a well-placed landing zone nearby I can use for just that. With five commanders left, I grab the nearby fuel so I can get them all across the map, hopefully without having to retrace my path or waste lives, and they can all be found inside these unique double bunkers. I'm low on fuel, and the last two fuel drums that are marked on the map are on the other side of it at the coastline, which in turn puts them on the opposite side of the map to my last objective. I wasn't expecting to have to take advantage of the fuel pausing over the ocean thing in mission 2, so I make my way up to the northwestern scud and destroy it before darting back over the ocean to follow the coast back down south for the fifth. I wanted to get the last guy, but the objective being completed is what matters, so I settle for five and pick up the last marked fuel drums before hightailing it to the northeast corner. You'll likely notice that I've said marked fuel drums a lot instead of just fuel drums during this, and that's because every mission has hidden pickups inside buildings, and while these pickups are always in fixed locations, I don't know where any of them are, and I'm certain that I'm going to need more fuel to make it back to the frigate. Taking the chance to level a few nearby buildings doesn't reveal any miracle fuel, so my backup plan is to destroy all of the camps at once, which will release four inmates at a time instead of one, as well as spawn four tanks nearby instead of one, and now I have to deal with all of that at once, but I managed to scrape by. As I'm leaving I get yet another low fuel warning and with no way to save myself this time I kinda sorta accidentally shoot a friendly trooper in the face with a hydra but I think I've done more than enough to bury the paperwork for killing one friendly. With no fuel drums that I know of left on the map and me on my last life I have to make it back to the ocean before my fuel runs out this time or I have to redo the entire mission but I managed to make it back to the coast and drop everyone off with 60 fuel left. Mission 3, Embassy City, is larger still than the previous mission and is also the first to not even show you where all of your objectives are right from the word go, instead only revealing them as the previous one is completed. Taking a moment to reconfirm the fact that the infantry in green are still the bad guys, I level a building under one such soldier's feet and head right over to rescue the UN inspectors for a very quick completion of objective 1. To the east of that there's a rapier and next to that is a building that's hiding the quick winch, so in a stunning display of Hydra marksmanship, my co-pilot destroys both right before I get my first low fuel warning. Fortunately there's one to my immediate north, so I head right over to that and find a future objective that the game hasn't yet told me about, and the hidden ICBM silo manages to launch a missile as I grossly underestimate how much firepower I have to put into it to blow it up before it can launch. Don't worry, this isn't the worst thing that happens to me in this mission, and it doesn't even stop at me destroying an armor repair. On the way to the biological weapons factory, I grab some much needed ammo and politely knock on the building a few times to coax the inhabitants out for rescue before forgetting that I have no room, so I make a detour to the nearby landing zone with 55 armor left. Returning to the weapons factories, I destroy another one to make its occupant bail out and have to hunt around for the first guy that I couldn't fit, but luckily he didn't manage to get very far. Fortunately there are 8 of these buildings and you only have to rescue one person from 6 of them, and 6 just so happens to be my maximum passenger capacity so it works out quite well. One guy managed to get away, but it's probably nothing to worry about. 
What is something to worry about is my fuel, and I end up with only four left when I drop everyone off. Thanks for choosing me as your Uber. Please be sure to rate me five stars. I'll talk to you later. I'm dead. Fortunately for me, I already destroyed one of the five ICBM silos while I was grabbing fuel earlier. Two of them are very close to the coastline, so I can go from the landing spot directly east and destroy the one not far north, then turn around to go down to the southern one and then follow it down even further so I can dart to the east for the last two. The sand dunes near the silos on land hide useful items which can be ammo crates, fuel drums, and even an armor repair, so it's worth at least trying to uncover them and pick them up right away if you need them. And you likely will since you have to take out the silos before they can fire. Only four of them have to be destroyed for this mission, so I say that the last one can live because I might not be able to spare the fuel it'll take to destroy it, and the objective is already complete, so I'm out. My next objective has me fly through the ocean to rescue some pilots that are lost at sea, but thankfully the ocean still pauses your fuel gauge even during objectives that take place over it as well, so I'm in no rush here. I accidentally give one of the pilot's life rafts a boo-boo with a hydra, but two out of three is pretty good, and with them on board the power station reveals itself on my map. It's very close to the silo that I left alone and has fuel drums, but with 16 fuel left I'm not going to make it in time to either of the nearby fuel drums, and I'm going to need those later so I lose my second life on my way to the power station. Going to the last silo that I ignored before turns out to be a great idea as not only are there fuel drums buried in the sand, but there's also an extra life and the power station drops an armor repair which I'm absolutely taking while I'm here. While I'm making my way through the city I decide to wipe out a few nearby buildings, and actually do find some ammo and fuel so I grab the former and save the latter for a future objective, then go back over the ocean to the madman's yacht. I really tried to destroy his escape boat here, but I got a bit overwhelmed in failing to do that as well as saving the guys jumping out of the yacht, so I lose yet another life to a guy in a speedboat. On my second pass, one guy drowns just as I make it to him, and with me having forgotten to pick up ammo when I landed earlier, I chip away at a defending speedboat, before getting ready to hit the camp in the northeast for the enemy ambassador. I grab some more fuel on the way and run into the embassy, so I clear a few buildings in hopes of some items but decide that it's a bit close to the embassy for my liking with most of it counting as a danger zone, plus I'm still bleeding fuel so scrub that, I should be going to the camp instead. My objective is to capture the ambassador as well as destroy all four of these identical buildings, and the former is probably where this flag is so in my haste to blow up a newly revealed M48, my co-pilot decides that the mission critical enemy ambassador is the preferable target and guns him down instead. If you ever get the return to frigate message, then you know the mission's a failure and while I would ordinarily load a save state or something, I wanted to do this the normal way and take my lump so I head back to the frigate, making sure to waste as much taxpayers money as possible by needlessly firing my guns. Attempt number two starts a bit stronger since I can use the knowledge I gained from my last attempt to speed things up this time, so I take control of a city block and uncover some goodies before going over to the UN van this time, pick up some fuel right as I'm about to run out and make my first drop off. The biological weapons facilities also go better since I don't end up with someone already in tow this time, and I choose a different path through the silos that most likely just waste the fuel I just saved by not having to make an extra trip to a landing zone. One of the silos has some much needed fuel and an armor repair nearby so I get those and then run into the radar site that's covering the enemy ambassador's camp and destroy that because it seemed like a good idea at the time I guess. And another silo wiped off the map. With fuel drums being right next to the power station that I have to tackle later anyway, and the game interestingly not designating it as a danger zone, I decide to get this objective done while I'm here and this also marks the madman's yacht on my map. More mindless destruction leads me to some more pickups which will come in handy, and then the third silo buried in the sand also has some ammo and armor. Dude, put your thing away, that's gross. Before heading out to sea, I pick up the fuel at the nearby landing zone and then go south for the last silo that I need to mark that objective off, and I'm good to go for the pilots lost at sea. There's only three of them and after this there would ordinarily be the power plant, but I've already taken care of that so with no mishaps this time, I'm able to rescue all three pilots. I would go to a landing zone before doing this, but eight people must be rescued from the yacht before this objective is complete, so I load up, drop off the first five, and come back for another three. Uh, he drowned before I got here, I swear. My fuel gets low on my way back to the camp, but that's not a worry because I'm too busy dying to the M48s instead. The developers were merciful enough to make all the enemies ignore you for a few seconds when you lose a life, and I end up in a much better position than I was the first time, having only lost my extra life while I'm up to where the enemy ambassador decided to commit bullet forehead last time. My last objective is to, and I quote, liberate the embassy, so of course I wipe out all organic life within the entire city block before landing, to have my co-pilot take the wheel of a nearby bus. Hey, that's cheating. 
before we can actually set off, I have to destroy the gate that's blocking the bus, and the game enabling this is helpfully indicated by a cutscene showing everyone climbing aboard, so now I have to protect this bus as it makes its way to the southeast corner of the map. However, it doesn't last very long. Yeah, a mechanic in this game that's well worth being aware of is if you crash, then anything underneath you is instantly destroyed, whether it's a building, an enemy, or even a friendly. So getting shot down wouldn't even be that bad, but I just so happened to fly over the mission critical bus, instantly destroying it when I crashed. I take the time to map a fast forward key and speed my way back to the frigate again. I'm glad there's no video evidence of what actually happened. Third time's the charm, as they say, and I speed through the objectives in just about the same way that I did before. The first two objectives are completed in record time, or at least a personal best record time, with only three trips for both of those objectives, and the next three are completed with the same method I used on the previous attempt. I tried to use the frigate to drop off the people from the yacht this time, but it seems that doesn't work, so off to the nearest landing zone and... Nope, not this time. I'd rather pick this guy up while I'm getting shot at, and yes, this is a spite thing. Now I'm back at the final objective with one of the buildings I was required to destroy housing some fuel drums, and I set off with the bus once again, and this time without any mishaps right out of the gate. A building on our way provides some fuel drums right as I need them, and I now have to keep the bus on screen because if I don't then it'll stop in its tracks as well as protect it, and destroy barricades that are now in its path. Not to mention this whole fuel thing that I've got going on right now. This time I lose my first life from a bad dodge against a ZST, but thankfully I'm way away from the bus, and a building near the first objective has some much needed fuel, with that short walk eating up half of it. Our destination is the southeastern corner of the map, and on my way there I hit this landing zone totally on purpose to drop off two guys at a TV station which I found out while editing this, scores you bonus points as well as the usual 150 armor repair for each of them, so that was a nice surprise. I blow up this EANN van due to it being in the way of my bus that just refuses to overtake the stupid thing, and make the quick decision to leave the bus alone to get the fuel at the southeastern pixel of the map, only just managing to not blow it up. The bus makes it to the corner of the map to complete objective 8, and I take another fill up so it doesn't nag me on my way back to the frigate with complaining like, our fuel is critical and we're all going to die or any nonsense like that. I was stuck on this one for a little while because you're supposed to clear out all the enemies at the oil fields, and I would always think that there's one straggler that I took forever to find, and I had the same issue here too. In my infinite wisdom I tried to play chicken with a ZSU and get myself shot down. Then with every enemy that I could find wiped out, I got so stumped that I actually went up the entire coastline to look for something that might jog my memory, and while I was there I stopped the oil spills for objective 2. Mercifully the quick winch is in plain sight this time, but what my monkey brain still took forever to work out was that it doesn't just want me to plot myself down at the landing zone in the middle of the oil fields, it actually wants me to go west to a bunker to clear enemies around at first and pick up the occupants, then hit the landing zone. Sadly for me, I had to refuel no less than three times before I found this out, and part of what threw me off was the red dot remaining on my map making me think there was still an enemy hiding nearby. Objective 3 is another kill all enemies, release hostages, take to landing zone, repeat several times thing, so my trigger finger gets a workout here, and three of the bunkers are fairly close to landing zones except for that one little isolationist shit lord down in the corner. On my trek there, I happen to spot some passing garbage trucks, and I'm reminded of one of my future objectives to destroy the garbage trucks that are carrying bomb parts in the southeast section of the map. Problem is, some of them are regular garbage trucks being driven by civilians, and the only way to tell them apart before blowing them up is to watch them when they drive north, and if they have red and yellow crap in the back then they're civilians, but the white and red cylinders are my actual target. It'd be good to get that out of the way while I'm down here, especially since it's just blowing things up which I'm better at than rescuing people, as you've seen. So with an extra life bringing me back up to 3 plus a passenger who does not make up for the 210 damage I took from that rocket, I continue to the last bunker and pick up the people in there as well. The garbage trucks for Objective 4 are all located within this southeastern city, and I don't think I'll be needing an armor refill for this, so I have to fly around the city trying to identify the trucks, which turns out to be a mistake because I didn't remember the additional enemy spawns when the third objective is complete. My co-pilot has a few close calls with the aim sticking to things that almost cost me a score penalty twice, and that one was just weird. My next life is lost in probably the dumbest way possible, but that doesn't deter me because dumber things are yet to come. Even my co-pilot can't tell the difference between a civilian garbage truck and a hostile one as a stray hellfire destroys the former, but Valdez gets a stern slap on the wrist as I order him to fire again but at the correct target this time, and now we're off to the northeast corner to destroy the nuclear weapons depot. It's guarded by a new and perhaps the game's most dangerous enemy, the Crow Tail. Without the damage boost from nearby active radar, they do 150 damage per shot and can survive two hellfire missiles, 
So clearing the depot out is more resource intensive than most other places, especially if it's still marked as a danger zone because you didn't take care of the nearby radar first. Even the buildings can take a lot more punishment if these sites are still active, so it's not worth the ammo investment, and in my case, doubly not worth the fuel investment. So don't be like me, destroy the radar sites first because this will also save you from crippling your finger from the furious button mashing. With 100 armor left, I go into town to see if I can find some supplies, and a crowtail pulls an incredible trick shot on me, bringing me down to my last life. Fortunately, I'm not immediately doomed by crashing on the fuel drums this time, and I'm able to use the grace period to pick it up. Now here's a cool thing. My chopper has 600 armor and crow tails do 150 damage, so if you double that, it means I can die in only two shots from them. Problem is, if I take a single hit from full armor and go down to half health from it, which I did by bumping into a building like an absolute doorknob and briefly losing control, my brain just doesn't ring the alarm bell and go into evasive maneuvers because I wasn't damaged enough to get the low armor warning, so I just kept going, which happened to take me directly into another missile and I die outright, marking my first game over for the playthrough. Luckily, you only have to do the mission from the beginning if you get a game over rather than restart the whole campaign, so I'm back into it with all the knowledge, okay fine, some of the knowledge from my first attempt under my belt. Oil spills, quick winch, landing zone, getting myself shot down, destroying a building by running into it, you know how it is. This time I decide to go to the bunker that's tucked away in the corner, and destroy the bomb parts trucks again because I didn't learn my lesson about not flying into danger zones the first time around, and I pick up an armor repair before dropping everyone off and heading to the second bunker. It's great when I don't even have to move to clear an objective location off the map. They all just pile onto the ladder in almost single file. With three objectives completed and six fuel drums confirmed remaining on the map, now I go to do the bomb parts and it's nice to not have to worry about being too shotted while I'm flying laps around the city hunting for some garbage trucks. What I do worry about is all of the fuel that I've used while trying to find them, and I don't remember how quick the final stretch of mission four was, but with everything in the southeastern quadrant done, I'm thinking that I can still make it. I just need to take out the radar sites to make my attack on the nuclear weapons depot safer and not gobble up all of my ammo. Thanks for the low armor warning game, I'm aware. With the second radar site destroyed, the depot is now adequately softened up, and I use my freshly acquired ammo to blast some new holes into it. Or at least I tried to with this aim, holy shit it must be windy today. Objective 6 is the power station guarded by M48s, nothing we haven't seen before, and they go down nice and smoothly with some ammo and an armor repair for my troubles. The Madman's Palace is guarded by no less than 4 crow tails, which cost me just about all of my heavy weapons ammo, but the last few hydras I have are just enough to punch a hole in the roof so my co-pilot can get in. It turns out that it was a trap and the Madman is about to make his escape in a bomber in the northwest corner of the map, which marks the final few minutes of the game in which I'll need a ton of ammo as well as a careful trigger finger. When the madman and my co-pilot are both on board, I have to blast a hole in the side of the plane and grab my escaping co-pilot, because killing them will fail the mission and then when the bomber starts moving again, unload on the plane with everything you've got. The madman's bomber has the most health out of any single destructible entity in the game, so go nuts with hellfires until you run out, then grab the nearby ammo crate when you inevitably need it and finish the madman's bomber off with that. When the game cuts to black, that's when you've won. With the madman's plan stopped for good, I pick up the fuel drums near the runway to ensure there won't be any complaining on the ride home, and all that's left is to land back on the frigate to complete the final mission, and in turn, the entirety of Desert Strike return to the Gulf with doubled fuel consumption. Well, that was one hell of a nostalgia trip and a good bit of fun to boot. I hadn't actually replayed the game in a fair few years, so most of what I remembered has slowly evaporated through the passage of time, and there were a few moments where I thought that I'd have to pick a spot to run out of fuel to get the refill upon respawning, in a good spot of time right before some mission critical moment. Looking at you, Embassy City boss. But overall, I had a lot of fun playing through Desert Strike again. The only game in the Strike series that I have any familiarity with is Desert Strike, so prepare for some major disappointment if you're after a video of this type for any of the other games in EA's Strike series, of which there are four, but I have been intending to sit down and play them. It's just difficult for me to play a game that's as old as a Super Nintendo game if I don't already have any prior experience with it. If I think of some challenge run that's interesting enough to pull me back to this series, it will almost certainly be in this game specifically, but I was stretching my brain hard to even come up with this one, so only time will tell. There will be more crazy ideas like this one coming in the future, and I appreciate everyone's patience while I continue writing the scripts, recording the voiceovers, and editing, as it all does take a long time, but it's worth it to create incentive to play some of my favorite childhood games again. So thank you all very much for watching, and goodbye.